Hi and welcome to the channel. If you've not visited the channel before, hopefully you'll find this uh, video interesting and consider subscribing. Um, regulars to the channel will know I like my portable operations, uh, both VHF, UHF and HF. And uh, I also take part in VHF, UHF contesting. Well, I've upgraded my station and I've purchased a, a generator, an inverter generator. Uh, and this works really well on uh, my two meter setup and also on uh, on the 70 cents setup as well but what i did find was on six meters it's a noise machine it generates a lot of interference and i had to resort to using uh, a battery this is my test setup at home we've got the six meter yagi on the hedge uh, the generator running away on the drive and i've got the rig plugged into my power supply which is plugged into the generator and you'll see here I've got S9 noise on 6 meters and it's the same on the other HF bands as well. And to confirm the interference was cable bound and not air bound I ran the rig from the mains uh, with the generator ring in the background and you can see here uh, no noise whatsoever. So clearly I was in need of a mains filter and in terms of design I plumbed for Ian GM3 SEK's design and I'll put a link uh, in the description below to Ian's web pages where you can see his design uh, plus uh, links to RSGB lectures he's given. So in terms of parts, these are the, um, I suppose, the passive parts of the project. An extension lead, which I'm assuming you've already got, uh, powering your equipment. Uh, just a piece of connector block, I think that's 16 amp. Some three and a half, uh, two and a half mil three core mains cable. Uh, in theory, you need about two meters of that, but that's a five meter roll. That was about 12 pound. Um, an IP65 rated box, which is large enough. Um, I'll put the size in the description. Um, this box was about nine pound. Two glands for connections, they're about a pound each. So these are the key components of the filter. This is a, a commercial mains filter. This is a Schaffner. Uh, Ian's uh, website has a, a description of a Roxbury as well. Um, both a similar spec and I'll put the, uh, the link in the description. That was about £15. This is the Snap-on Type 31 filter uh, ferrite. That is equivalent to about four 240 rings so there's about four of those in that i suppose if you've got four of these you could use these instead uh, and that was um, about 14 pounds and these two oval type 43 filters which we're going to join together to make a, a binocular car uh, both of those are about seven pounds in total um, if that's four of those that is about two to three when you look at the uh, the specs so you can source these from a number of places. I got the cable locally, but everything else was online because a specialist. Uh, I found splitting the order between uh, Mouser and CPC here in the UK uh, was the best option. Uh, I got free postage on the Mouser, Mouser order. Uh, so in total, included with postage and packing, all this cost around £75. So to get the project going, I'm going to strip off the outer sheath of about two meters of this mains cable so we can access the cores. So with the three cores removed, that's all waste now, uh, we now need to twist these together to get the benefits of close coupling. Uh, we can do that uh, hopefully with a, a variable speed drill or perhaps an electric screwdriver. So hopefully this will work. I've got the far end clamped uh, in some mole grips with a heavy weight on. This end I've taped to this electric screwdriver. Um, so here you go, see what happens. I think that's a success. And this is the, uh, the finished twist. If you twist it a bit too hard, it, it, it 
sort of settles back to a natural uh, position so that seems okay to me and now we need to put the turns around the cars so it's seven round this one and I've made a binocular car out of the two ovals you could glue these I've just put a bit of tape and then cable tie them together so I could always get them apart if I wanted to be very careful handling these they're very slippy uh, if you drop them they will break um, so seven turns around this one and two and a half to three turns around this one it's as much as you can get through really on that cable size and you can see there I've got three turns around that car so it was worth stripping that extra cable I managed to get nine turns through the car um, I suppose even seven so the more the better really and it, it was a squeeze but without damaging the cable I managed to get it through uh, so now it's just a case of cable tying that and then preparing these ends for connection and while I remember if you tape up the end of the wires so you get a nice pointy tip it's much easier threading um, you can do so much with the clamp open but after about three turns you need to close it and start threading through so pointy tip helps and just to tidy up got two cable ties around the car itself to keep it tightly shut and just one around the cable to keep it in place so ready to prepare the ends and fit it in the box So here we have the mains filter fitted to the box and the two glands are in place and just to explain because these can differ in layout um, line is the incoming mains from your plug and load is the outgoing mains to your cars and your sockets and your rig and everything else and be careful on the layouts these pin connections can change this side's earth live in neutral and that's on the line side and the load side is um, live and neutral so they can alter so just make sure you've got this the right way around in the box so now it's time to cut the extension lead this is the lead I'm going to use for the generator in the car so it's quite a long lead um, but I want the filter in the car with me uh, with this uh, four gang socket um, so I'll be cutting this somewhere along here uh, and then attaching the, the box. That's the next job. So I've attached the connector block to the exit lead from the box, then connected the cars to the other side of the connection. And here's the tabs ready to connect to the mains filter. So here we are with the box complete, with all the connections made from the line side. So this is the plug. Uh, earth is connected and also connected round uh, through the ferrites. The earth misses out this commercial uh, mains filter. So live and neutral, live and neutral through the twisted car, through the 31, through the 243s and connected to this side with the extension lead uh, and two glands holding that tight. Um, now although that's loose in there, when the lid goes on it just nips it up nicely and that remains snug. Uh, so that won't move around. It's not going to get bashed about anyway. Um, so that's the build complete. And before using the filter, it needs checking for safety and continuity, etc. First tests um, weren't that good because I had the filter at the socket end of the lead, so it was going to be in the car with me. I've changed it now. I've put it right at the plug end, so it's right next to the generator, as you can see here. And the trailing lead then has the socket on the other end into the car. Uh, I think having it at the socket end was allowing the lead to pick up uh, RFI and basically radiate uh, as well as the generator itself. So uh, here I've basically choked it off its source. So here are some before and after pictures for each band. The before is a standard extension lead from the generator to power supply to rig. And the after is using the filtered extension lead. I've left the rig in its normal settings, so IPO for the lower bands and AMP1 and AMP2 for the upper bands. 
So starting with top band, uh, horrendous S9 plus 10 of noise. And with the filter in, it's nearly gone down to about S half. 80 meters, S7 of noise. And gone effectively. 40 meters, S3 of noise. And again, uh, removed by the filter. 30 meters, S4 of noise. And gone with the filter. 20 meters, again high, S7 of noise. And the filter took it down to about S2, so it hasn't completely got rid of it in this case. 17 meters, there wasn't much there to start with. Uh, and the same again. 15 meters, S3 of noise without the filter. And no noise with the filter. 12 meters, just about S1 of noise there. And no noise uh, with the filter. Uh, 10 meters again s2 of noise and no noise with the filter and six meters the band i'm interested in uh, seven uh, of noise and unfortunately sod's law s5 of noise with the filter and because i had already cut the extension lead to put the filter at the generator and i had this handy temporary join to add another type 43 filter so four turns around that removed the s2 noise on 20 meters so that went down to zero the only other thing I had to hand was another clamp on 31 type ferrite in the shack. So I think six turns of the lead round that. Uh, didn't make any effect on top band, but here you can see on six, uh, the noise is now down to S2. So clearly I've still got some work to do for six meters, uh, maybe uh, different ferrites, more ferrites, or perhaps different uh, combination of turns, uh, including inside the filter, because I did add two extra turns in there. Um, as you've seen, it's an excellent piece of kit. It does work, uh, wiped out the noise across all the bands. If you've tried a power off test at home and run on a battery and you know you've got mains interference, then this is probably something you want to try. Also a good project for clubs, I would suggest. Uh, if, if a club kept one uh, on standby, then members could borrow and know whether it's going to work or not and then, and then commit to building their own. Um, so uh, I've just got a bit more work to do. I'm sticking with the generator. Uh, I'm, I've got a few voltage current issues on batteries. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please consider subscribing. 73.